the human being inertly, innately is afraid and apprehensive of change. This is why it's so easy just to follow, to imitate blindly, because then you don't have to feel like you're responsible. You can blame somebody else. Well, think about it tonight. Is our purpose in this world simply to eat and sleep and dress and work and acquire some material things and enjoy ourselves? Well, the hedonists, they will tell you, that is the pleasure seekers, the worldly people who only want to enjoy themselves, who are only concerned about taste and touch and feel and smell and have and possess, those people who think they have the world in their hands or that the world is in a cup of brandy, they will tell you that life is only for enjoyment, so enjoy all that you can. Is this our purpose? Why are we born? What is the object of our existence? And what is the wisdom behind the creation of man and this tremendous universe? Think about that question. Think about it seriously. Now some people will argue that there is simply no proof of any divine origin of this world. And there is no proof that there is a God. And there is no proof that this universe has come about through any divine purpose. There are those who argue that, and some of them, they occupy some of the higher places in academia, in government. Some of them occupy some of the elite positions in society and in our lives. Some of them are called central personalities, but they themselves are confused. They also have their own frustrations and I'd like to share a statistic with you. The greatest amount of misery, the greatest amount of suicide, the greatest amount of confusion and disparagement exists among that class of people. So evidently, even they don't have the answers. Now there are people who argue this way and they say that perhaps this world came about by chance. That means random. That's what chance means, random. Like going to the gambling house. You call it here the gaming rooms. They have a nice name for it here. It's a place of immorality. It's a place where you put your life savings on the line. You're trying to get something for nothing. You put your hard-earned money. Sometimes the man doesn't tell his wife or the wife doesn't tell her husband and they lose their house and their lives, taking a chance, trying to earn something for nothing. And the government has set it up and supported it with your tax dollars. And you're so foolish that you think that after you gamble for five years and you've lost fifty or sixty thousand dollars, that if you win $25,000, you get real happy. So thinking that this world came about by chance is the same as thinking that when you put money in a slot machine, that the numbers come up by chance. They don't. Everybody knows that the casinos are rigged. And only the house wins all the time. But to think that this world came about in the same way that people gamble, random choice, well, let's put that to a test. This is an example that you can do in your home with your children.
take ten marbles, number them one to ten, and put them inside of a bag and shake the bag. And then close your eyes without looking inside that bag, pull out number one, pull out marble number two, pull out marble number three, in that order. Just ten marbles, that's all. Five, ten. What do you think the chances are pulling out those ten marbles in that order without looking at them? Is anybody here that's a mathematic genius, knows about calculus, knows the random chance? Does anybody know the chance? Twenty-six million to one. That's only ten marbles. That's called a micro example. Now let's go a little bit further out to a mic macro example. The earth that we are on is one planet among nine, or some people say eleven, in our solar system, isn't it? And our sun that gives energy and light and gravity is the center of our solar system. And our sun is only one star, and it happens to be one of the smaller stars in our galaxy called the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is only one of the smaller galaxies in the nebula called the Andromeda. And the Andromeda has itself millions of galaxies like the one that our sun is a part of. And there are millions or literally countless galaxies, clusters of galaxies like the Andromeda that have been predicted by sending out sound and light. And they have sent out sound and light that has never returned. Now all of this diverse order that we see in the heavens, that we are able to somewhat calculate and predict, that we call night and day, time, all of this is in order, that allows us to calculate. Tell me, if you can't pull out ten marbles in order, how did all of this come in order? Evidently man didn't do it because man is only a drop of water on the earth, significantly nothing. You can't even see him if you get a certain distance. He's forgotten about. So I say to you, certainly, this whole great world with all of its great orchestration could not have just come together. And even if we accept the Big Bang Theory, Someone had to create that combustion because after the bang came about, everything came in order. So order does not come from disorder. You can't get out of your bed in the morning and don't make your bed and come back and your bed is made unless you got a maid. You can't demolish a house and come back, and the house came back together, unless you got a reconstruction crew. Order doesn't come from disorder. Order comes from an order. An order means a legislation. It means a science. It means a fact. It means a determination. And if man wasn't around, when that Big Bang took place, he had nothing to do with that determination or anything after it. Here I would like to mention a few verses of the Qur'an that address this subject because the Qur'an was revealed more than 1400 years ago, a book of 6,626 verses that has been retained and memorized, preserved since the time that it was revealed more than 1,424 years ago. Memorized in the time of the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, who received it in his own life. Memorized by his companions. And the same Quran is with us today. And among the people sitting here, I'm sure there are five or ten people who have memorized the entire Quran. This is the phenomena 
if Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, never left anything else as a proof of his miracle and his prophethood to the world, it would be the Qur'an. I asked my brother to recite just a few verses and then I'll translate it. 